So let's say, for example, that for whatever reason, and there definitely could be reasons why we want to do this, not just pertaining to this particular bash script, but even pertaining to other files that maybe you want to get off of this box. Let's say that we want to get the results from running our linpeas.sh enumeration forward slash privilege esque script. We want to get those results off of Metasploitable 2 and on Kali Linux box to save for later. Maybe we're doing a pen test. There's a bunch of different reasons why you would want to do this. Like I said, not even just for the linpeas script, but for any file on this computer. This is actually a little bit more challenging than you might initially think. Very easy to get something over to it. I tried many different ways to get something from it uh, using Telnet, FTP, Netcat, and I kept running into problems. If anybody has a way that they're able to successfully do this, um, please let me know, share it in the, in the comments. So the way that I was able to do this ultimately was uh, using SCP, So once again, let's go ahead and run linpeas.sh. This time, I'm just going to run it by itself. I'm not going to include dash A, uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to redirect the output of this into a file. We're going to call that file linpeas.txt. Now, I'm not sure what this is all about. It says the script needs bash in version 4.0 or newer. It says it's aborting. Uh, but it is nonetheless saving the results to the file. So we'll give that some time to complete. All right, it has completed. So now if we do a word count on linpeas.txt, we have the results from our enumeration and we're looking at almost 5,000 lines. Can we use nano on this and open it up? No, we cannot. All right, but we do know that it is on here and we can cat out the contents of it and we see that it is on the machine. All right, so now this is the challenge. We want to get the results of this off of Metasploitable 2 and over to our Kali Linux box. Well, we can't use the same methodology that we used to get it on there because we can't start up a, as far as I'm, to my knowledge, we're not able to start up a Python web server on the machine. Um, that won't work. So if we try to do that, running python m http dot server, uh, we'll get back. We'll get back errors. It's, just, it's not going to work. I've tried it. I've tried it different ways. It doesn't work. Python three, Python uh, simple HTTP server. I've tried all that. Unless I'm missing something, I also tried using. Netcat, couldn't get that to work. I tried all sorts of different ways. The one and only way that I thus far have been able to get this to work, feel free to tell me I'm dumb, I don't know what I'm talking about, and show me how you got it to work, but I was able to get this to work using um, SCP. Now the problem with this is that just like with using SSH, we have an outdated algorithm. So that is one of the challenging aspects of this. So what I was able to figure out was that uh, I could essentially just piggyback off of that SSH command or the syntax of it, I should say. We've used this lengthy command a couple times now. I can use the same syntax specifying you know, this particular algorithm and it will work for the SCP command. So I'm simply gonna replace SSH with SCP, and then I'm gonna do what you normally would do with SCP when you're trying to copy something from the remote system to your local system. When you are doing that, you go to the end, and after the IP address of the remote system, you insert a colon, followed by the directory where the file is located and the name of the file. So we know that 
we're trying to get the uh, linpeas.txt file from inside of that temp directory and I'm going to copy it to the local system whatever directory I'm currently in and I'm going to do that by using that that dot and this will work once again you have to use the password for MSF admin which we know is MSF admin and now we should have a file on our local system called linpeas.txt and if we do a word count on that we see that it is 4582 lines long just just as it is on Metasploitable 2. So now we have successfully transferred a file from Metasploitable 2 over to our attack box. And we can review the results, hang on to them for later, incorporate them into our pen testing report, etc. and so forth. does appear that um, some of the ASCII art did not transfer so well. So if we were just doing this with uh, a more simple file with information in it, I were to create a file called fresh.txt. Uh, I keep forgetting we can't use nano. Uh, I'll create a, a file using touch called fresh.txt and then I will just echo uh, inside of that file you know, something stupid like fresh was here, right? Echo that into that file, cat out the contents of that, and there it is. Now, if we do that same thing on a much more simple file like this that just has basic txt data inside of it, we'll see what happens when we do that. So I will once again uh, rerun that command, but this time I'm going to grab fresh.txt. If we cap that out, there we go. So that's intact. We're able to keep that data intact. So back on Metasploitable 2, I do an ls lh on linpeas.txt. It's 489 kilobytes in size. Let's go ahead and try uh, base64 encoding it. And then see, we'll see what happens with that. So I'm going to run the base 64. Uh, I'm going to run the base 64 command. I am going to specify dash W and a zero, and uh, that's going to disable line wrapping. I'm running that on linpeas.txt, and we will call. We will redirect that to a new file called linpeas.txt. 64. I do an ls lh. There it is right here. So it's now actually a little bit bigger. And if we cat out the contents of that, that's what it looks like. So it's basically been converted into one. A very long uh, string of base 64 encoding. So if I do a word count on that, you see it says zero lines long. So it's just one very long string. So let's go ahead and grab that now. So we run that command. This is going to be linpeas.txt.64 right, so now cat out the contents of that file there it is our very long line now let's let's decode it back into text so we'll run it We'll do it like this. So we'll cat out the contents of that file. We're 
you're gonna pipe it into base 64 with a dash D to decode, and then we will redirect it into a file called linps.txt. We'll do a dot D to specify decoding. Now if I cut out the contents of that, there we go. So we have been able to uh, preserve all of the additional uh, characters, the ASCII art and all of that stuff so that we can still make sense of it. That works for me. I like that. I like that. So that's, that's going to be it right there. So we were able to successfully uh, transfer data, transfer a file, and in this example, the results from our the results from running our linps.sh script, we were able to successfully transfer that file from Metasploitable 2 over to our attack box, which technically would be considered data exfiltration. Uh, we ran into some issues with the outdated key algorithm. We were able to get past that. We ran into another issue with the way that the data was being uh, preserved. We were, um, we were kind of mangling the data a little bit and we were able to get by that by first base 64 encoding the results and then after transferring it base 64 decoding the results all right so that is going to be it for this video a little bit of file transfer going on there a little bit of encoding and some data exfiltration i like it i like it and it's all in the name of Kali Linux. What my uh, what my viewers are asking for, I'm giving it to you as best I can, as best I know how. With that being said, keep learning and stay fresh. I'll see you in the next one.